Hello listeners, welcome to another episode of the Geek Press Podcast. On today's episode, Lewis and Noah really catch up and just ramble on about stuff, including video games, current drama going on in the comic book space, movies, and somehow accurately predict how the end of the DC movie universe is going to end in Aquaman 2. If you enjoy what you're listening to, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please give us a positive rating across the board. Help us rise through the ranks and gain notoriety so we can get that sweet, sweet Ryan Reynolds cricket mobile money sponsorship. See you in a bit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies and thems. My name is Luis Gutierrez, and welcome to episode 56 of the Geek Press Podcast. As always, I am joined by my rotating guest of celebrity co-host, and today, you know them, you love them, Mr. Chris Hemsworth. How you doing, Mr. Chris Hemsworth? Oh, oh. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I can't do an Australian accent. I love how like uh, it sounded like you glitched out for a second. Uh, <laughs> I, I, hello, mate. How's it? Go- how's it going? Oh gosh, it's great to be here. I can't do. I can't do Australian. <laughs> uh, hi guys. I'm Noah. I'm the co-host of this podcast, and each week I'm subjected to doing a celebrity impersonation. I have to say, Irish and Australian are my, like, I can do, like, passable accents for a lot of places, but for Aust- Australia and Ireland, not uh, uh, Irish, I just, I kind of fuck up. <laughs> you got me in my weakness, uh, but hey, welcome to the Geek Press Podcast, where we talk about things. Uh, this episode being a bit more uh, chaotic, a bit more freeform, a bit more improv. But um, before all of that, Lewis, what are you doing? What you've been up to? How are you? What have you been watching? Okay, so let's see. What have I been doing this week? I've been watching a lot of TVs, but not like a lot at all at the same time, if that makes sense, you know? So, but this week was another like more or less slow work week and... I've said this a million times, and I will continue to say it because if anyone is a, of a if if anyone's trying to do freelance work, I like to be as transparent as possible. Um, when you do freelance work, you either get too much work or not enough work. And lately, I've been getting not enough work after getting too much work. But it's starting to look like I'm transitioning into that season again, where I'm getting too much work based off of like my projects and like like uh stuff like teams I'm joining, for lack of a better term, you know. So that's that's always a good problem to have when I'm swimming in work, but that's but to answer your question, sorry, I'm I'm going on a tangent. I have been watching a lot of Sandman. I think it's really good. It's one of those shows where it's mainly just like acting. They have a lot of like heavy CG scenes, but it's really good CG. It's not like DC EU um, CG scenes. And I've been watch. I've been I've been making my way through this episode of The Bear, and I've watched it in like increments of like three sittings. Because this is like mm. the only episode that is like an hour, an hour and a half long. And to give you an idea, most episodes are either between 30 minutes to 50 minutes. And this whole episode is like a flashback scene that's supposed to be like very. This whole episode is like a, it's a flashback scene that's like very pivotal. To kind of explain why the family is the way it is. And but it's just so long. And I'm like, fuck, it's, it's like a whole like mini feature length movie I'm watching right here and Mm -hmm. so i've been doing that and let's see what else i've been the other last week i beat resident evil 4 uh remake on my stream which was a lot of fun i i didn't i knew like going in that game was gonna be really good just because Mm -hmm. one the original i loved and then two all the reviews across the board said this game was gonna be good so i was like okay i was confident going in that it was gonna be a good game you know and so I, which beat... was which? Oh, I'm go sorry, go ahead. No, we're gonna say uh, of those remixes of those games, which was the first one? Was it Resident Evil Two? Yeah, the first one to kind of get like the current gen treatment was Resident Evil Two, mm-hmm. and then then it was the three, now four. So the 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 you know the common working theory is that they're working their way through uh, the the OG. So probably everyone is expecting a remake of Resident Evil Five now. And based, off, and based off of the ending, you know, a little bit of a spoiler alert, 
uh, based off the ending of Resident Evil 4 Remake, at the end, uh, Ada is talking to Albert Wesker, which is like the big baddie of Resident Evil 5. And he's like, yes, we're going to kill a million people. And I'm like, oh, shit, they're like directly setting up Resident Evil 5, which if I remember correctly, they don't even do that in the original one. So that was like an added scene in there. Um, but a lot of people have a lot. A lot of people in the Resident Evil community, too, have also been asking, like, hey, why haven't you did a remake for Resident Evil 1? You just went straight to 2, which I'm on that boat because I've never actually played Resident Evil 1. The um, mm -hmm. When I started playing Resident Evil, it was Resident Evil 4. So I completely missed out on one, two, and three. So that's why I was really happy when they remade two and three. I was like, okay, now I get to actually play these games. Okay, anyway, let's not here nor there. I'm going on a rant about Resident Evil. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I beat Resident Evil Four Remake, and it was really great. I loved it. Um, and I hated it <laughs> because I watched it at where did I watch it? You watched like your stream on my streams at Twitch.tv <laughs> forward slash I'm Joshua Joestar. <laughs> I watched it at, uh, on Twitch, and I'm annoyed because you killed my husband. A little weird. A little upsetting. But, you know, whatever. We learn and we live, and we just kind of move on. Live, laugh, and learn. Yes. And so, yeah, I, I was doing that. And then maybe like a few weeks ago, I bought I bought Dead, the Dead Space remake. And that's the, the original Dead Space, you know, I'm going to give you like a vague number. It came out like sometime either in the late two thousands or the um or like the twenty tens. It came out between one of those two, and I I remember I loved I fucking loved the the Dead Space series as a kid growing up, and I'm playing that right now. And at first I was like inherently comparing Resident Evil to Dead Space, and I was like, man, this kind of sucks, just because they're 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 the same game but they're different, you know. Mm -hmm. and but after like i'm like a hand like i'm at the midway point right now in my streams of dead space and i'm like oh no this game's very fun it's 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 a lot of fun and i'm happy too that both of these remakes from like the same more or less era hold up really well and it, it makes my little kid the little kid in me happy but yeah that's that's been my week and also too i've been we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later but I've been catching up on a lot of mangas. I have one more manga to read, and I'm officially caught up with all of them until they start, until they come out with new ones uh, later this month in August. But yeah, that's that's been it. I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else at the moment. Because there's some other things I want to talk about, but I'll save it for when we get further into the episode. But what about you, Noah? What's your life been like? What you've been reading? I know you've been going on book TikTok. You've been like, I read this for this day. I read this this week. <laughs> And you've, I saw you uh, tweet about the X Men, everything. How's life been treating you, man? Life's been okay. Uh, as I had to go to the emergency room last week just because I had a lot of stomach pain. Doctors say it was just a virus. So if anything, no, I blame you. Zero. I, I'm patient zero. We are Resident Evil. Uh, but the thing is, I'm going to get a bunch of cool powers. I'm gonna like start growing extra arms and like going rah, and then Lewis, you're gonna have to take me down. So it's yeah, gonna be we're gonna real, have a big anime esque fight. Yeah, and it's gonna be so emotional because we're already friends. Yeah, it's like while we're fighting, we're gonna have flashbacks to us just like fucking around at Guild Hall and stuff. <laughs> it's gonna be really sad. But it's gonna I be like really cool I like to think midway through the fight, I was like we're about to punch each other. We like just freeze, and it's because we're watching the flashbacks, and then. After the freeze, we just go right back to hitting each other. So, like, randomly mm -hmm. throughout the fight, it looks like we're glitching. Very, very Naruto. In the, <laughs> in the, uh, which, like, if you don't know Naruto, that's fine. But you know they have, like, big fights and flashbacks. But, uh, yeah, it's just a virus. I've taken some pills. I'm very gassy. I'm at maybe 60% now. But my a daily... my I always consider myself, like, daily percentage, like, 80%. So, um... <laughs> I've never 100%, so that's fine. Hey, these get degrees, baby. These get degrees, baby. That's how I got my degree. <laughs> but uh, that's how I got my degree. It's true. But uh, I've been listening to two new podcasts. Uh, one, I don't know if he's an enemy or ally, but neutral party to the podcast, Emilio. Started yeah, he's a, a podcast. He's yeah. a neutral one, yeah. He's a neutral. He started a podcast called Literally Him. With a Ryan Gosling. Him, yeah, him and his friend just deep dive into ryan gosling films you know what's so funny for for mm -hmm. those who are unaware um emilio is a mutual friend between noah and i 
and Emilio's like a big film nerd. That's that's his jam. You know, he loves mm-hmm. he loves to talk about films. He writes scripts on his spare time. That's his thing. He's a film guy. And I he I'm pretty sure like the listeners have heard of that meme. It's like I'm literally him. I'm Ryan Gosling. And he very much fell into that meme, but like very self aware. So the fact mm-hmm. that he made a podcast all about Ryan Gosling is fucking hilarious. I love that. And honestly, I, I listened to the first few episodes where they cover Blue Valentine and Fracture. Uh, I haven't heard either of those, and they're both pretty depressing. And the thing is, uh, another, you know what, enemy, enemy to the podcast, Diego Crespo of the Waffle Press. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do film reviews and stuff as well, but usually I only listen to the ones that I know. Okay. Like if they do a review on a film I've never watched, I'm not going to listen to it. That's fair. And I've watched, like, I think the only Ryan Gosling film I've ever actually seen is La La Land. I've never seen La La Land, but I've heard it's fucking great. It's it's a, it's an enjoyable time. But uh, yeah, so I, I so I'm kind of like stopped listening. Just but uh, yeah, literally him. Another podcast, uh, it's called Gray Malcolm Lane, which is like if they go through each X Men issue, like since the sixties, and it's enjoyable. So I've been listening to those two. Okay, um, and I've been watching a lot of Bob's Burgers, just so much Bob's Burgers. It's insane. It's funny because sometimes I feel like we watch shows that we like, hmm. but they're not as funny as it used to be and you just kind of like enjoy them but every once in a while i'll get like a genuine like really good laugh out of the show and i'm like okay i do still like it you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. like you, like you kind of grew you, out of it a little bit yeah like early episodes of rick and morty hit different than later episodes yeah 100 percent agree uh-huh. i 100 percent agree on that and i don't know if that's because of who i am because of who the what the writing's like but it's just it, it t- sometimes stuff hits differently Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying a lot of Bob's Burgers and we're going into that. And I, I've, I've been meaning to watch some movies since I have free time, I guess, since I haven't been doing much just chores and walking around the house going, Ugh. Just fucking zombieing around. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm patient one, as you said. I'm uh-huh. patient zero, sorry. Uh, my question, you play the Resident Evil games. Quick question Are the movies involved with the games at all? No, not at all. Uh, the only movies that are actually involved directly correlated to the games are the CG movies. But mm-hmm. here's the thing, okay? They're kind of all bad. All this, all the Resident Evil movies, mm-hmm. like there, there are clips you could watch, and if you kind of just like shut off your brain, you're like, okay, this was kind of enjoyable. Yeah, they're just like dumb action movies. Yeah, you can't think because there, there, there's this one. I, I've seen the video on Twitter so many fucking times. It is hilarious. It's like mm-hmm. it's Leon and Chris, Chris Redfield, like back to back in a fucking hallway, and Chris has an assault rifle and Leon has his pistol, and they're just like they're turning into John Wick, just like back to back killing all these zombies, doing all these acrobats and all these like crazy shit, and throughout the whole time too, like you know, obviously it's a video game, but mm-hmm. there is some like reality in the world still. Leon shoots like a million bullets in his fucking pistol and never reloads. And I'm like, damn, dude. And then, like, there's, like, another scene, too, where Leon's, like, fucking getting chased by some someone on the freeway. And he's on his motorcycle and he's blowing up all these cars and, like, killing, like, innocent civilians randomly. And I'm like, damn, this is all kind of bad. But to, uh, there was a recent movie that came out. It was, like, called, like, Death Island or something. I heard that one was mm-hmm. kind of good. But the, to, the long, the short answer is only the CG movies correlate to the games. But gotcha. the live action movies, no, that's its own separate thing. I wonder if they would ever want to do a crossover because there are six of them. Like somebody has to be into these movies. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody has to be into them. There are six of them. But uh, I remember the first one came out in 2002. And like, I think I was seven maybe seven or six yeah i, was and I watched a baby. the first one yeah and i thought this was like the coolest shit ever mm-hmm. so i i i don't know if i've seen the other resident evils but i still think the first one's really fun yeah the first one is actually arguably probably the best because it's the most true to the game plus Even... it has my wife michelle rodriguez in it so i'm pretty i'm pretty okay with that that's right she is in it huh she, is in it. she dies it's she she's kind of like what's his face from game of thrones uh and lord of the rings where they just die in a lot of stuff 
I, you just described oh, a lot man. of actors. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, keep talking while I look okay. it up. Yeah, like the, the first Resident Evil is arguably the most true to the source material, but they obviously do a twist on it, like they do their own original story at the, all at the same time. And then so is the second one. It's pretty pretty close to what Resident Evil 2 is. And then as soon as they get to the Resident Evil 3 movie, they just say, fuck it, post-apocalypse, uh, desert world, and this and that, like Mad Max. They just completely say, fuck the source material. We're loosely based in the soft Resident Evil games now. And that's what I loved about it. But I think I only watched up until maybe like the third Resident Evil movie. And I know like they kind of just got like batshit crazy more and more as the movies went on. And also, too, they looked insanely fucking cheesy, like really bad. Oh, Sean Bean. Sean, who the fuck is Sean Bean? Sean Bean, uh, there's like a joke online where everything he's in, he dies because he died in Game of Thrones and he died in uh, Lord of the Rings. Let me look up Sean. Boromir. He's done a lot of like theatrical stuff. He was in National Treasure. Uh, And Troy, he just. Oh, Ned Stark. Why did you just say Ned Stark? I forgot the name Ned Stark. (laughs) <laughs> i'm sorry how do you but, forget the guy who like literally sets everything into motion at that point oh my god Poor, you know what the starks are too pure they're too pure for this world no they're not only he was he was the only inherently good guy of that show or that of that series franchise whatever you want to call it but uh yeah i <laughs> i know this all started but yeah, Michelle Rodriguez dies in a lot of stuff. She dies in this one. She dies in... Doesn't she die in Fast and Furious? I think she dies in Fast and Furious. Honestly, bro, I have Avatar, the first Avatar. I didn't even know she was an Avatar. She was an Avatar. Every time she, she was pops like the up, pilot friend. Every time she pops up in a movie for me, because I don't watch <laughs> a lot of her, her films. Mm-hmm. Not because, like, I don't think she's a good actor, just because I hate women. But, uh... Oh, my God. We here at the Geek... We here at the Geek Press uh, support women and their causes. That was a joke. Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. I was uh, I was th- trying my best to keep going without laughing. <laughs> yeah, you know. But, um, every time I see her in a movie, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're still an actor. Like, I completely forgot about you. <gasps> oh, my God. She dies in the D&D movie. She does, and then she comes back. Yeah, then she comes back, but she still technically dies. Yeah, so there you go. I think you, you go. That, that's in her contract. She's like, kill me. <laughs> Honestly, I've joked around with some friends that are writing scripts, and I'm kind of like, oh, write me in so I can die. <laughs> like, I've done, I get it. I understand that. But, but yeah, any, anything else you've been, you've been kind of consuming? We, we just got on a whole, like, tangent about that. Oh my god! Uh, that's my pain talks. Uh, I've kind of—I—I think I'm swearing off of X Men comics just because there's a whole thing, and I'm just—I'm just tired. Okay, I need—I need—I need, I, I need, I need context on this because I saw that you put on on Twitter. Well, I'm sorry, it's called X now. Um, X. But I'm still gonna oh call god. it Twitter. Um, so I saw that you posted on Twitter. It was a—it <laughs> was a a picture of Xavier. On Krakoa, that right? That's their island. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Krakoa. Oh, Krakoa. Yeah, on Krakoa, he's like, "It's done," or like, "Help me," or some shit. He's saying something while he's looking at the beach. Very Aaron Yeager. Mm. And what what's what's going on? What was the context of all that? Like, why oh why gosh. are you okay. signing off of X Men now? <clears throat> okay, so here's here we go, everyone. If you haven't been keeping up with X Men, here's your crash course. Uh, the X Men said, uh, "Everyone keeps trying to fucking kill us. Let's just make our own country." Everybody, good guys, bad guys, bad guys, y'all have diplomatic immunity. Just come back and work for us. Very Operation Paperclip, very Oppenheimer. Uh, they're taking up all the bad guys, all the good guys. Everyone's on this big island called Krakoa, right? They make, like, gates that you can walk in that teleport you to Krakoa. And they try to, like, they basically learn to clone people. So if you die, they'll bring you right back. Uh, it's a whole thing. So they're bringing back a bunch of mutants that have died. <clears throat> and every year they have this thing called the Hellfire Gala. And it's nothing like, ever good happens at that, right? Like it's nothing some... good ever happens at it. <laughs> they never. I don't know why they lesson. keep having it. They don't learn their lesson. <laughs> it's funny because there's like there was they, they drew drawings of like Emma Frost planning the party, and on the whiteboard behind her, she's like, "Why does security suck?" And it's like written on the whiteboard, like security fucking sucks. Okay, give give me uh, give me a quick rundown. What happened? Because there's like three galas, right, or four? There's there's. Right. This is the third gala. Okay, what happened at the first one, and what happened at the second one? 
Okay, at the first one, uh, there was drama. It was only mutants and dignitaries. And uh, they chose the first X-Men team that represents the mutant island. That's a lot of the same faces you've seen, like Rogue, Cyclops, Jean Grey, all that. Second gala, uh, they start losing some support. Uh, Beast has gone full evil and has kind of fucked over some people, so that's not good. There's some couple bad guys infiltrate, stuff like that. So you see, like, year is year, it gets worse. Third year. So basically, third year, uh, they have a big gala. They choose a team, which uh, people were very excited about because this team so far has been, like, the most diverse, the most queer, and according to a lot of fans, the mo- most, quote, interesting. as they Or the say. most woke. <clears throat> yeah, the most woke. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because it has a bunch of, like, minor characters that people were really rooting for. So, like, Cyclops and Jean Grey are, they're like, oh, we're stepping back. Uh, we're letting these other two people take charge. And, like, they show this big panel of everyone, like, standing, like, we're the new X-Men. And then uh, there's this bad guy called orcus they're like the main bad guys orcus shows up and kills half that team oh shit because like their version of juggernaut which is like essential like gets shot down from space and kills half of them like jubilee's fucking dead a few other people are dead and uh everyone's like oh let's fight so they do this whole thing it's this whole fight and this whole time in order to get money uh Kukuro has been selling drugs to people and they're like vitamins they help extend life they help uh fight like uh depression and oh, okay uh, like actual medicine the aging like actual medicine okay i thought you meant like they're just on crack and shit i'm like damn no. X-Men, really <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's what happens when you bring in a bunch of villains to uh fucking to magneto island. showed up he's like hey you guys trying to make some <laughs> trying to make some bread real quick I'm trying to make some bread <laughs> baby but uh yeah so basically uh, it turns out Orcus infiltrated their factories and they put in a thing where all the humans that have eaten the fucking pills, they can basically control them. So they're like, oh, we'll kill all the humans unless you guys surrender. And Charles Xavier is just like, fuck. So he likes Charles Xavier stops everyone from fighting. He's also, like, okay, time what out, the fuck time. you want? Okay. Xavier, too, he's not like handicapped no more, right? Like he can walk around. No, he can walk around. And he wears a little X helmet. Yeah, it's like a mini Cerebro machine. Is it he? He can walk because of the machine, or no? Uh, he they they resurrect. They just fix his. They fix his fucking legs. They're just like, <laughs> hey, you know what? This is fucking Kukoa, baby. He was like, we could have done is, this. Yeah. Could have done this a long time ago, but we just <laughs> decided to do it now. <laughs> which is which is the interesting. Which was I'll, I'll get into this later. It's an interesting conversation because people are like, well, disabilities are they a part of you or are they not? Because I know some people are like, oh, I would love to be cured of my wheelchair, and other people are like, no, this is who I am. So it's a whole like conversation that's beyond the scope of my knowledge but yeah the point is that's what because I, like cyclops doesn't fix his eyes uh-huh that yeah that's that's what i've always wondered too i'm mm-hmm. like i I've, I've always thought being in a wheelchair was like a part of his character much like mm-hmm. how being blind is like daredevil's thing you know mm-hmm. and i think the thing that's the difference between their characters because i feel like charles is never like charles loves to move he loves he doesn't he i don't think the the wheelchair's ever been a <laughs> yeah well, that's a whole other conversation. But, uh, <laughs> uh, like, I feel Daredevil. I, I think we both read the comic where Daredevil was like, I, I'm choosing to be blind. This is who I am as a person. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But then every, they're like, tell your people to walk through the gates onto Mars because they, they colonize Mars. Like, and get all the fucking mutants off the planet. And Charles is like, fuck, you're going to kill all these humans unless I do this. And they're like, yep. So Charles, in his infinite wisdom, uses his, like, mental powers to push every mutant on the Earth into the portals. Damn. Uh, except for, like, a handful of mutants, like Emma Frost, who already had, like, contingencies in their head, and a lot of them, like, are resistant to psychic training. So the, like, the core members, essentially? Uh, a lot of core members, a lot of, like, hanger-ons. Uh, Miss Marvel's there for some reason. How, did they explain how, how she came back? By, by it turn it, it just turns out this whole time she had an X gene that was being suppressed by her, her inhuman gene, so they could resurrect her because she was a mutant all along. That's such a, that's such a cop don't, out. Let's, we don't let's not think about it. Let's not. I don't want to think about. Are you it. okay? Let me ask you this: Are you I, happy that she's um, back? I guess. <laughs> I, I have. I'm not talking about that now. I already. We already have too much trauma to talk about. But uh, yeah. So Charles does that, and evil robot Mora is like, oh, I'm going to kill you, Charles, you dumb bitch. And then Rogue pops out, and she's like, not so fast, sugar. I was across the planet. And then she saves Charles. 
and Rose is like, oh, we got to go to Captain America. And Charles is like, no, back to fucking Krakoa. Krakoa is magically picked up. It's gone. Krakoa's gone. It's just a fucking, there's rock there. And Rogue is just like, where the fuck is everyone? And Charles is like, oh my God. Like, if they were on Mars, I could still sense them. They rigged our teleportation gates. Everyone's fucking dead. I killed them all. <laughs> and so, like, Charles is, like, sitting on the remains of Krakoa and he's like, fucking avenge us, Rogue, because I killed us all. And it's, like, a whole thing. And it's it's an interesting... There's lots of discussion going around about whether or not this is good or bad. A lot, Like I said earlier, a lot of people are mad because this team of X-Men was, like, our most diverse, and then you kill most of them. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole thing, because now it's sending a mutant to be hunted again. And I know a lot of people were tired of, like, oh, mutants have been hunted since their fucking existence, and, like, finally they have a nation where they can be safe, and all of a sudden they're hunted again. Wait, why, why are they being hunted, though? Because uh, Orcus, they, they're because they killed all the dignitaries and they're framing oh, the mutants. Okay, and they're okay, like, okay, oh, okay, look okay. at the mutants, they ran away. Do, 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 do. And now, like, Sentinels are back and it's a whole thing. And it's interesting because uh, I know there's a lot of arguments of people being like, hey, you have mutant technology to bring people back to life. Why don't you just fight the bad guys and then bring back to life all the humans that were going to die because of the bad guys, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing is that's interesting is that uh, Man- Manito recently died a couple issues ago. Oh, shit. And, okay. uh, he chose not to be brought back. He's like, I'm fucking done. I'm tired. Peace out, homies. That's a that's but, a bold uh, choice for the creators to do that. Oh, yeah. It, it was it was very bold. I thought it was very interesting. But like as he lay dying in Storm's hand, uh, uh, in hands, he's just like, Storm, I need you to watch Charles. Because, like, for his dream to work, he's going to murder all of us. Like, he's going to kill all of us just so his dream will come true of humans. And, like, he's going to fuck us over. And Storm is just like, yeah, I'll watch him. Storm didn't do a good job. uh, (laughs) Because Charles killed everyone. (laughs) But also, Storm is the queen of Mars right now. So it's a whole thing. She's, like, in charge of Mars. What the fuck is going on with (laughs) X-Men? A lot of shit has been going on. There's like a lot of different movie plots. Like, all right, I was that I was not expecting you. I I was honestly expecting like because I know there's a she's like uh, Black Panther's like boot thing. So I I was expecting you. Oh, she's like Queen of Wakanda. I was expecting that. I was not expecting like fucking. Oh no, the fucking Queen of Mars. All right, good for her. They colonized Mars a couple years ago, I think. That's so fucking random. Okay. Well, no, because they're just like, what if every mutant works together and does this shit? So they had, like, Magneto bringing together the core and fucking Iceman laying down ice and storm regulating, like, uh, temperature and stuff. And they did, like, a whole thing. It was very interesting. Okay, okay, okay. If anyone wants to see that, it's literally called uh, Planet Sized X-Men, I think. And are those X-Men, like, those mutants, are they still around? The ones on Mars? Uh, The ones on Mars are fine. Okay, and who, any, uh, and besides Storm, are there any, like, core members on Mars? Um, I think Cable. Uh, a bunch of new characters, and for some reason, he's not an X-Men, but Richard Ryder Nova is there. Okay. He's, like, their human friend. Uh-huh. But, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know who's on Mars. I think Sunspot's on Mars. Uh, I don't, I don't really remember. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with the X-Men. They're back to being hunted. Uh. Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat's turning into a ninja. She used to be a pirate, now she's a ninja. Uh just shit, just a lot of shit is going on. Okay. Uh so yeah, it's it's a wild time. And I've seen criticism on both sides saying, like, oh well, this this is why'd you kill the most diverse team? And another side being like, Oh, well, everything that rises has to fall. It's the storytelling, they'll all be back. Why are you worried? I would say all of it's valid. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's 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 a I'm just like ugh, X because I'm just tired of the X Men always being fucked. Mm-hmm. Like I just want them to be happy. Like they were on a, like they they Krakoa this this era has lasted for quite a long time. But I I I I'm down for it to be around forever. You know, just let it be happy. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Any more questions? That's it's really interesting to hear that they're going back to the roots on this. Because it does, it does seem like you know one step forward, two steps back kind of thing mm. right there, and that is a, a bit of a bummer. Because I've heard nothing but good things about the X Men too. 
like about the the last few years not not just from you but from like the online discourse that like the x-men was probably one of the if you're gonna get into marvel comics just just read an x-men comic like that that was like the general consent mm-hmm. i think it it also sucks because like the mutants have just been constantly fucked like for a very long time and i mean through like the decimation with Scarlet Witch and then Genosha getting blown up and like it feels like they can they never have a W. You know, like every W they get always like gets it taken away. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like damn. And speaking of W's being taken away, have you been watching Secret Invasion? Because I have not. I watched the first and the last episode. Damn, that's a that's quite a well, the thing is, I I I, I kind of figured everything out. Like I I wasn't confused. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. Like I wasn't confused by anything. Now, as someone like, who only watched the first and the last episode, do you think the show was good? I mean, you did see the beginning and end. Um, that's a really good question, and I'm glad we live in a country where we can ask questions because that's so important. Yeah, fucking God Senator Garcia, America. come on! God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> but um i guess it was okay <laughs> okay I, I guess it was fine it um it was it was okay it was okay because i heard uh, a lot of people like mm-hmm. shit on it i i've never seen i haven't watched the show mm-hmm. i was i was actually genuinely interested in watching the show up until i heard that the ending was really really bad i feel like a lot of these marvel shows don't know how to like stick the landing no not at all like the endings are always fucking weird. Like I, I look at Captain um, uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier as a as a prime example of something that started really good, mm-hmm. and then the the costume reveal was really cool. And then they dropped the ball, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, Captain America and the Winter Soldier is like uh, Fal- whatever it is, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's like racism for dummies. Yeah. It's just like uh, you can't get alone because you're black, and then the audience is like, "What?" <laughs> and everyone that's normal is like, "Yeah, that's what fucking happens with banks." <laughs> what, what, what do you What do you think was gonna happen? I feel like, in my opinion, the only show that was that was like good, yeah, I wouldn't say through and through because I didn't enjoy it at first, but the only one that really stuck the line, yeah, was Loki. I thought you guys said Loki. I'm not. I I thought Loki was okay, but I would actually agree with that, just because it felt consistent. Even though I have my gripes with the show, mm-hmm. um, even even stuff that I did love, like Miss Marvel, even that ending was not very good. I haven't even watched Miss Marvel. The, the the it's a good show, but the villains are just really weak. Okay, the villains are lame. So did you? I and I say I say Loki and Moon Knight, but the only reason why I liked Moon Knight, I, and I say this a lot, because it was so disconnected. Like mm-hmm. you 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 can just tell me this was a Netflix series, and I would have believed you. Because of how little it had to do with the MCU, and also, you know, I've never seen it. Also, too, the memes that came out of that show were pretty funny. <laughs> it was like one of them I'm never gonna forget. <clears throat> it was like me trying to f- figure out who's watching gay porn on my phone, and it's him looking at the security cameras, and like he's looking right at the security camera, looking back at himself. <laughs> like those memes are fucking that... hilarious. <laughs> that is pretty good. <laughs> but um. I, I I don't know if I want to like I want to watch it because I like Nick Fury, but they the whole like MCU's they they haven't done Nick mm-hmm. good, and I also like Amelia Clark. She's my girl. I fell in love with her in Game of Thrones. She's a phenomenal actress, mm-hmm. but like it's if, if the writing's on the wall right there, you know. Um, I I don't know. I don't I don't I I. I, I, I think it's sad to say, but I think if you're a fan of Nick Fury, maybe don't watch this. Yeah, that, this is this is the vibes I'm getting, and it hurts. It hurts to to see that. Isn't it like the is? I think the finale was like the lowest rated stuff that of that they came out with. I think. Yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh huh. And so I'm just like oof. And I think too, this is like a bigger problem with the MCU is that there's like no sense of direction. Mm-hmm. Like they were, I they were building for like the multiverse and all that. With like, with Loki, and they're they're kind of like hinting about like Secret Wars, and they kind of like further dabbled the net just a little bit with like Spider Verse, you know. Mm-hmm. And then what? Like, what? What's the point of all these shows? You know, like what? 
okay, we got fucking Harry Styles, and we got we got Hulk's son with like an, a with the horrible hairline. Ugh, don't remind me. Yeah, like we got all this stuff. Like, what's the point of introducing all of them? Like, the only one I think that really kind of I say paid off like loosely is the Black Widow show. No, the movie where Florence Pugh's character went into Hawkeye. But even then, that wasn't really all that important. Like, the Hawkeye's point was just to introduce Kate Bishop, I guess, right? That was, like, that was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it just, it hurts to to see the MCU, like, Mm. just flop now. (laughs) And I'm okay with things not going into other things. Like, I'm okay with them being standalone, but the standalone stuff just doesn't work for me. Yeah. So it's just I'm just like over it. Uh, I'm excited that Marvel's this November is the last Marvel thing they're ever gonna do. Honestly, uh, kind of like you're kind of right on that <coughs> because uh, the strikes. Mm-hmm. So, your your joke may actually may have some merit to it. That's true. Uh, if you guys tune into Lewis's uh, Twitch stream, uh, friend of the podcast, Jake is always like, "What do you think of this Marvel thing?" What do you and think he'll of this? bring up and the I'm, most obscure uh, fucking uh, character that no one's heard of. <laughs> And I'm just like, Jake, it doesn't matter. Marvel's ending. It's over. I I do I do wonder how uh the DC universe is gonna be now. Mm-hmm. Because it I, I feel like the Superman movie has a lot of pressure on it to be good. What do you think? Oh yeah. It has immense pressure. It's it's very much even though Blue Beetle is like the first of that line, it's not the first to be made by that certain like team. Yeah. Like Blue. it's still out. They're including it, but it's still outside their vision. I feel like Blue Beetle's kind of like that, like the stepson. Like everyone's like, "Oh yeah, yeah you're there, you're there." Yeah. But, but let's let's like go a, see the, the real son l- leaving the abusive family to go join a new one. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's leaving the Snyder family. Like I want, uh, I want to see Blue Beetle mm-hmm. though. I'm excited. I know you've been. You're part of. You're Blue. part of the Blue Beetle Battalion, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> even though it's even though it's on track not to make money. Uh, really? It's on track not to do good. But you know what? It was supposed to be an HBO Max movie, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, the fact so that it even got pushed to theatrical is crazy. <laughs> and uh, I I do wonder too, like what they're gonna do with that one. Because one thing I'm really excited is that once you introduce Blue Beetle, you like Booster Gold and the other Blue Beetles is inherently tied to Jaime. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm gen- I'm really excited to see if they if they mention the uh the previous Blue Beetle and Booster Gold because th- those two guys I love them I love my C listers you know that I-, I know in the trailer that we do see some like costumes of Blue Beetle of Ted Cord and stuff uh huh. That's exciting. I think it'd be really funny because Blue Beetle and Booster Gold uh, are both in Justice League International. And I just think, I feel like it would be a gun move to like just skip Justice League and do Justice League International with a bunch of nobodies. Uh huh. And I just think that'd be really funny. And also, also, too, like the, to go back to the Superman movie, they have like a fuck, like that's a like, huge cast of people they're already announcing. Mm-hmm. Like they have a Green Lantern. I think Lantern. they're trying to make up for. I think they're trying to make up for lost time because they're like, we're not going to spend six years introducing one character every year so they can all team up. No, we're going to introduce a bunch and like slowly let the audience warm up to them. Honestly, that's 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 kind of like the wave too, huh? Like they mm-hmm. they did that with Suicide Squad, with like John mm-hmm. with John with Peacemaker, and. Mm-hmm. They they introduced what fuck vigilante, and they they even said there's gonna be more of him. Mm-hmm. But no, like, oh, we're gonna say mm-hmm. no. I was about to say I think that's a smart thing, and uh, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm excited. For how it. do you how do you think uh, Aquaman two is gonna end? I think they should. I think uh, Aquaman two is just uh, gonna end with Jason Momoa shirtless standing by the water, and he's Screaming. gonna be like. <laughs> yeah he's just screaming ah! <laughs> with a bottle of whiskey in one hand yeah <laughs> this is this is really funny because that's just the ending of the flash movie <laughs> no if you if you guys haven't seen the flash movie there's like uh there's a scene where like he's trying to talk to aquaman and aquaman's just like aquaman what are you talking about there's no because he changed the timeline or whatever 
mm-hmm. he just like falls. It's like it doesn't look good. It's not a good showing for Jason Momoa. He's just drunk and like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think. The, uh, how do you think Aquaman two is gonna end? I think what's gonna happen is that he's gonna be fighting fucking Black Manta, right? Black Manta is gonna have mm-hmm. like an Iron Man esque suit. And then he's gonna have a bottle of whiskey in one hand. He's gonna be a little. He's gonna be like, uh, like you know how in Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Jack Captain Jack Black he's is always slurring. <laughs> Jack Black. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be slurring like the whole time. And so then what's gonna happen is he's gonna grab his trident, right? He's gonna be like Black Manta, you will stop because like you know they're raising the ocean tides. He's gonna look all mm. cool like this whole big like this whole big show, a spectacle. And everyone's dying, and it's gonna beg the question like, where's Superman at? Where's that? It doesn't matter. They're all dead somehow, and it's just them. And so what he does is he grabs his trident, and he's like on this giant rock, and he brings it into the ground like King Arthur slamming the sword in in the ground. As soon as he does that, he causes a rift, and the world explodes. And so then, he just kills the world. Yeah, the world explodes, right? And then a narration happens. It was like the beginning of time. And it fades out to Superman, and it it introduces Superman legacy. So Aquaman was the catalyst that created the new universe. Just fuck the Flash. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's oh my god, we call we call it Aqua Points. <laughs> Welcome to Aqua Points. Aquaman using his trident broke a hole in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> And if you really want to go, like, if you really want to go apeshit crazy, down the line, we do, like, a doomsday clock thing. And it's that when we replace Dr. Manhattan mm-hmm. <laughs> with, <laughs> with Jason Ramos Aquaman. <laughs> oh, my God. No, this is how I want Aquaman 2. I want Aquaman 2 to end like this. Uh, the same thing you said where everyone's fighting and they uh-huh. all die. And then Aquaman's like, no. And then it's Zolo as, as Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle, waked up. And he goes... And he's like, wow, that was pretty crazy. And then the screen goes to black. Let's get ready for school. And it just Let's get ready for school. <laughs> it was all a dream. And we're 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 Aquaman 2 ends. <laughs> yeah. The Beetle begins. <laughs> yeah. It was all a dream. Oh God. See. And then his mom comes in and she's like, Have you been writing that edgy Justice League fan fiction again? Oh God, bro. I'll fucking cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. Here here's the thing too. I I've never really liked Jason Momoa. I I, I try I try to hop on the bandwagon when they first introduced him, and I remember mm-hmm. too a lot of girls like oh he's so dreamy. I'm like yeah he's a handsome guy for sure, but I just never liked him as a person. I respect that. I'm not gonna fight you on that. And also like I I, I hate I hate to like be that guy, but they should have kept Aquaman white and blonde, you know. Um, I think. Oh my god! No, but I just I don't think this Aquaman really like. You, you look at this guy; he doesn't look like an Aquaman. You know, he just kind of kind of looks like it's, a like a what does what like does Aquaman bro. look like? Well, I, in my head, Aquaman is like posh. He's like Superman a little bit, you know. But like the sea. Well, version. that's the thing. He wasn't raised under the water. Ah, that's true. I just uh, you're right. I don't know. You know, I'm talking out of my ass. I don't know enough. I don't even like, give a fuck. You're, about you're thinking Aquaman. of someone fancy. That's literally uh, Mera. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. So, I was, but I, I get what you mean. Uh, just I don't. I don't read enough Aquaman or any Aquaman comics to really be dying on this hill. So, <laughs> but I feel like if you watch like Injustice, he's like, oh, I'm King of Atlantis. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'm going for. Like when I see him in like the Justice League cartoons, he's like, you know, he has some authority to him. But every time you see him in a mm-hmm. Justice League and. The Snyder version. He's like, he's like, what's that? Yeah, and I'm like, all right, this is a, this is the Aquaman I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if I saw Superman and he just like dabbed me up. I'm like, all right, what the where the fuck did this come from? You know? I was like, I don't care for this. You need to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Superman dabbing up, have you watched? Have you been watching um, the anime? I have not. Because I've only watched like the first few episodes. We talked about this, huh? Mm, well when we talked about it you didn't say you watched the first few so tell me what you think of it uh, well it was only the first two episodes where like they in- <laughs> uh, wait, it's, uh, I feel like I feel like we have where they talked about uh, the Suicide Squad and all that I don't know there's some good podcast no not one right here <laughs> 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 but yeah that's that's um 
I haven't watched do you it. Like, do you like the cartoon? Do you like I, it? I like it. I think it's cool, but it's a little too kiddie. That's my, those are from mm. the first two episodes. It's cool, but it's a little Which too is funny because it's on Adult Swim. Yeah, right? But here's the thing I think everyone could agree on. Louis Lang going to make me act up in that show. She's a baddie. Through and through. <laughs> they, I, I've, I'm convinced that that needs to be the new status quo of how Louis Lane looks like now in movies and comic books and shows everything. She needs to look like that because she has mm-hmm. my heart. Like, I will, uh, I will knock the fuck out of Clark Kent if it means I get to go on a date with her. And he'll let you, too, because he wants to keep, the, keep up the facade. Yeah. <laughs> he'll let you beat the shit out of him. I think it's funny because there was a clip online. Uh, do you see a clip online about her doing crazy stuff? No, I have not. Oh, okay. Well, apparently she does something crazy to, like, try to prove Clark Kent to Superman. Uh-huh. And everyone's just like... Oh, why are, why are they always having women do this? And I'm just like, she invented that trope. Back in like the 70s, she was like, I'm going to trick Superman into falling in love with me. Like she was the inventor of the women doing crazy shit for mm. the Superman. So I, I just think that's really funny. Um, you know, to, to keep the topic on women a little bit, have you, oh have you been, have you watched the Barbie movie? I have not. Oh, I've been you, meaning to. You'd like I heard it. really good thing. You'd like it. It's really good. I uh, going back to the whole like Ryan Gosling thing. I haven't watched a lot of Ryan Gosling movies, but I will say he was he was my favorite part of that movie as Ken. Like he was insanely good, and the, the movie as a whole, it's like it, it's clearly meant for like young girls. You know that's the whole message mm-hmm. of the movie. But um, even even if you're not a girl, you can enjoy the movie because mm-hmm. so, there's like Ken stuff in it, isn't there? Yeah. And it's I don't want to give like the any plot points away, but I was genuinely surprised with how much I fucking love the Ryan Gosling's Ken. I'll just I'll I'll keep it at that because he he he's kind of a show stealer in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But go watch it when you get the chance. I think you'd like it a lot. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Have you seen? So you haven't done Barbie Heimer yet? I have not. It seems like a lot. Are you are you gonna do Barbie Heimer? Probably not. <laughs> All right, I respect the the calm supervillain way you said it. <laughs> Probably not. I'm busy rewriting the end to Aquaman two thanks to you. <laughs> I'm gonna go hit up what's his name James Wan. I, I don't fucking know. Remember Whatever the director. Remember when they announced like a Nightwing movie, and like did they? Yeah, they announced the Nightwing movie, a Deathstroke movie. All they had like a whole fucking lineup of movies. They were gonna they never like made it past like the pre production phase, I think. I mean they killed Dick Grayson in that universe, so I'm not sure how that would work. Yeah, that's something they kinda gloss over too, that Batman like had like a Robin. But you know what? If you took the Titans costume Robin, I feel like that would fit in pretty well with uh the Snyder stuff. Yeah. I and I, I was I was honestly surprised too they didn't like connect them at one point because it, it was uh it's kind of like the same fucking tone Snyder was going for, wouldn't you agree? Say that again? I, I'm I said like I'm surprised they never try to connect the two because mm-hmm. the Titans was like the same tone like Snyder was going for. Yeah, it was very dark in that way. And I'm surprised because especially with the Jason Todd stuff. Like the way his attitude was, like, "Oh, we're we're Batman's distraction. We're his shield. We're his weapon." Like the way he talked felt very in line with that with what the Bruce of the Snyderverse might say. So I, I was surprised. I feel like if they were clever, they could have fit that in very easily. Uh huh. But they didn't want to. They could have just said like, "Oh, this was going on in the background mm-hmm. while Justice League was happening," or I don't know. They could do something. Just pay Ben. Just pay Ben Affleck to show up. Be like, "Hey, what's up, Dick?" It's just it's me, <laughs> Batman, <laughs> the drunk dad. Hey guys, hey guys, what's going on? It just fucking fades into the shadows, and that's it. <laughs> oh my god! Then the Titans would be canon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just get excited when I think about the Titans. I'm sorry, no, but it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. But you know what? That final the that final season has its ups. I enjoy that final season. I only watched season one, and then I watched the fir- I watched like half of the first season of Doom Patrol, and I was a fan of that era. 
and I never went back because it was back on. I respect that. It was back on DC Universe. None of you kids will remember that. Oh my god! Remember DC Universe? Mm-hmm. They had wow. what, like two shows, and Titans was yeah. one of them. That was it. It was Titans <laughs> and Doom Patrol. That was it. Had a bunch of like, cartoons, I think. Oh no, they had that, and then the one of their other big lures was to um, it was like season three of Young Justice. That oh, was right. That was their thing. I don't know why they started that. They should have folded it into Max at the beginning. Did it, are you still watching Young Justice? Is it? I, did, it ended. Oh, it's done. Yeah, uh, there's no signs of renewal. After oh. the last season that came out, that's that's it for now. Yeah, I've, which I've, is I'll go for mm-hmm. it. I was about to say it's interesting because Young Justice is kind of one of the most like expanded universes we've ever seen. That when it comes to like DC animation, mm-hmm. like maybe even bigger than the Justice League cartoons. Really? Okay, which is just crazy. I would I would make that argument. Because I, I I watched the first two seasons like before like when they originally aired, not when they aired but like they you know you know what I'm trying to say I watched I watched the first two seasons and I I, I thought it was fucking great but I never watched mm-hmm. the newer ones it just I I don't know what it was maybe I just felt like they were doing too much or maybe I grew out of it but I, I still heard it's pretty good yeah I I would say all four seasons have their ups and downs but I think the 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 other two are just really good I I would say. If you have the chance to watch them, I definitely would say yeah. Okay. Does um I remember at the end of like season two, they like teased Dark Side. Does that ever like come to fruition? Yeah, you you get more of Dark Side. Okay, because I was really interested in that too. I'm like, how how are they gonna do Dark Side? Because when you think of Dark Side, like you you think of like Superman and then like the Justice League, you know. Hmm. Well, the show definitely takes like moments to like have little, you know, like how in season one where they had like a whole episode where it was like half Justice League deciding stuff and half, like, the team doing stuff. Yeah. Like, they definitely have episodes like that where they, like, highlight the Justice League doing shit while the team's doing shit. So, like, you get to see them do stuff. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm tempted to go back and rewatch it because I remember the last one I was watching was, like, Aqua Lad was a, was a spy working for Dick Grayson, but the only... he mm-hmm. But Nightwing was the only one who, like, knew he was actually a good guy. Because he was, like, mm-hmm. fucking deep undercover. So everyone else is, like, going for blood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, everyone was trying to kill him? Yeah. Yeah. So that was I, some good stuff. I need to watch it. Okay. Also, season two is a big Blue Beetle season, so good for Blue Beetle. Yeah, that's that's what really got me in love with Blue Beetle, because I was like, oh, this guy's actually really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, let, let me ask you this, Noah. Right. Ask me anything you want, whenever you want. You are given the money to make a Titans video game. Oh my god! How do you do this? <clears throat> is it is, uh, it is it going like PlayStation exclusive, Xbox multiplat, uh, for like give me give me give me the reins? I'm curious how you would do all this. That's a really hard question. That's really tough. Oh fuck you! Um, <laughs> because part of me wants to do like. Ooh, part of me wants to do like an like an injustice style Mortal Kombat. Okay, but the thing is, I don't know if there's enough Titans to carry. Over. There are enough Titans to carry roster, but do people care? No, they don't. Uh, oh my gosh, I think maybe something. Oof, that's a really tough one. I'd have to think about that for a minute. I think I'd like sort of an open world type thing. Okay. Like a, a GTA mm-hmm. ma- meets God of War. Okay. Like okay. where there's all a bunch. Of, like you have the city size, but you have like so many side quests you could do. Uh huh. I think I would love like maybe four main titans you could switch between. Who, who are the titans? Obviously, you got Dick. Uh, that's that's a yeah. Given. You got Dick Grayson. So you got some like you got some monk fighter type moves, like Batman Arkham Asylum type moves. Mm-hmm. You have that. I'm gonna say Donna Troy, so you can have like a uh, sword and shield and like lasso. Your yeah, your Kratos style. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, the other two. Because I, I, I feel like if you have such a large, if you have too big of a roster, you have to like work on making them all individual. And I, I'd rather focus on like four playable characters. So, oh, that's really tough. I'm surprised you're not saying like um, Arsenal. Oh, the thing is, Arsenal could be fun. Maybe as like a DLC, but I think I'd really like to see, if I'm giving lots of money, I'd like to set up like a flash mechanic 
a Wally West. Let's see how we do speed. You know what I mean? Okay, that, that's cool. I Because I know people have wanted a Flash game before, so I want a, 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 maybe a Flash. And then... I know, are you doing Wally West like in his costume, or are you doing it in like the, the Flash costume? Um, I want them, as a, I guess, as a Flash. As a Flash. Okay, okay. And then... Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go crazy. I'm going to say Cyborg. Okay. Because then I, you have your shooter. I was, then you have your shooter. I was expecting you have, a cyborg. Uh, some, mm-hmm. You have your shooter. You have your tech guy. So with Don Troy, you have your flight mechanics. You have your speed. So then those are the main four. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we can definitely have some like DLCs of like Raven and Speedy and stuff. Okay. But okay. Uh, yeah, I feel like you can have like a whole story, and, but except you can only fight as those guys. Mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. That's that's my first thought. That's my first thought. Okay. Okay. We're, no, we're just workshopping this. None, none send stone yet. Before. This. Nobody steal our idea. <laughs> Nobody steal this. I'm taking this straight. When I when we when the two of us figure this out, we're gonna take it straight to Mr. Gun. <laughs> okay, now it's okay, we've established open world, we got our core characters. Now is this gonna be like a single player or is it gonna like where you rotate between guys or like a co op? Oh no, I, I feel like you have to do a co op. Okay, okay, so it's co-op, mm-hmm. and who who's the villain? Oh, that's really tough. Because um, you could do the obvious. You could say Deathstroke, you know? Yeah, that's a really tough one. Uh, I think I might just say Deathstroke, because it's easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the story. Maybe he's trying to, like, take off all the Titans or something. I don't, I'm not he's sure. Like, I couldn't kill it, you yeah. guys as kids, but I'm going to kill you as adults now. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. All right, now my last question is: What city is it going to be in? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. All right. <laughs> oh no, they've had a tower there. Before. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought, I thought you just like. All right, I want no. them. To... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So we got a four-play co-op, and we got our we got our four guys, and they're all going to be fighting Deathstroke and his goons. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. No, go make it happen. I don't know how you're going to do it. All right. Go make it happen. See you later. <laughs> This just in. Local Titans fan is holding James Gunn hostage and demands he makes a game. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a bunch of vanilla folders with like lined papers with a bunch of scraggly notes on it. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm kind of like disappointed in is that like, even though it hasn't come out, the writing on the wall looked like it was like it was going to be kind of bad. Was the uh, mm-hmm. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League? Yeah, I had such high hopes for that. Yeah, and then now, well, obviously it's delayed and it's not out yet, but I, I'm hoping that that game is good. Like, I never want to see, like, comic book games flop, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm hoping that's good, but... I'm just... I, I think I brought up the fact that I would like them each to have an individual fighting set because you look at the gameplay for Suicide Squad and they just all have guns. Yeah, it just seems like... Like, I, I was super excited to play as King Shark because I'm like, I just want to go and, like, uh-huh. wreck shit, you know? Yeah, and when exactly. you think of Harley Quinn, you think kind of like of a like a Nightwing s, like you know she's elegant, yeah. she's f- jumping in between doing her acrobats with like a fucking hammer, you know. Yeah, but all right, I guess everyone has a fucking gun, and even Captain Boomerang. Well, Captain Boomerang has his boomerangs, I guess. But yeah, but he also has like, why does he have a gun? <laughs> you should have a boomerang. <laughs> I'm done playing games with you, Flash. <laughs> <laughs> you just start blasting. <laughs> All right, but I think I think we've kind of talked about everything we wanted to talk about. We just kind of rambled this episode. We didn't have. A I'm proud of us. I yet. knew our I, I knew our rambling would fill the time. <laughs> but Noah, uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you at? You can find me at Noah is Garcia on TikTok, Twitter. Instagram and threads, I guess. Oh, you're not on Blue Sky? Uh, okay. I'm not, what the fuck is Blue Sky? <laughs> so, okay, Blue Sky was like, it's a, it's another Twitter competitor that's been out for a minute, but the only way you get on it is if, like, you, you, you're you either on the wait list or someone gives you an invite link. I just, I just got on it the other day, so that's why I'm being on Pompous. Don't okay. worry. Don't okay. worry about it right okay. now. Okay, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, and you can see my photography work on Noah Garcia underscore photography. Lewis, where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram and Twitter, or I guess X now. We didn't even talk about Elon Musk and the big oh my X God. sign. Uh, at Luis Guterres. 
and you can if you google my name luis joshua guitarist you can find all of my work at uh i was about to say dc at ign or GameSpot, where i do news and guides but you can also tune into my streams at twitch.tv forward slash i'm joshua joestar where i stream video games who would have thought but yeah um we yeah we're going to the elon musting really quick he he like officially named it x which is fucking hilarious and put a giant x that's like flashing into people's apartments so i wonder how long that's gonna last but, which is really funny because people keep calling it like a broken tv stand yeah <laughs> <laughs> Noah, what's uh what's everyone's homework everyone's homework is to um watch season three of young justice all right everyone's homework for me is um y'all need to go on Crunchyroll or funimation you know you gotta you gotta do this through official means okay usually mm-hmm. usually i'd say you know do what you gotta do but this time not nah, i'm not saying that nah. you go go nor um Crunchyroll or funimation and go watch noragami because i need i need a season three they just kind of left it mm-hmm. and it's, it's, a, it's a great fucking anime and i hear the manga is just as good so go watch noragami so i could get another season that's our home yeah but yeah thank you all for listening if you made it this far we appreciate every single one of you guys except you you know who i'm talking about and we'll see you guys next week bye-bye bye